Hello everyone and welcome back to another SketchUp plugin tutorial. In today's video, I'll show you how to use the Busier Spline plugin by the one and only Frito6. So this extension contains a set of tools designed for drawing and editing many different types of polylines, splines and curves. Let's check them out one by one as fast as we can. First one, classic Busier curve. Let's try to draw one. Activate the tool and the first click will set the first point of your curve. The next one defines its end point and all the others define control points that define the final shape of the curve. Double click on the last one to confirm the shape. If you prefer to set the control points in order so that the end point is the one that you set last, you just need to type shift twice right after you click on the first point of the curve. Instead of double clicking to confirm, you can just right click and select done now you can still edit the position of all control points just by clicking and dragging you can also add a point by double clicking on the control line or remove one by double clicking directly on it when hovering over a point you'll see a little black colored square or an empty one the colored black square means you're in plain lock mode and the empty one means you're in axis lock mode you toggle one or the other by pressing the control key, like this. Now when pressing the arrow keys on the keyboard, you can lock the movement of a control point on the plane or on an axis of your choice. You can see the cursor changing color as I switch between red, green and blue axes. Let's press the up arrow key to lock it on the blue axis and simply click and drag. To exit the lock mode, press the down arrow key. In the measurement box here, you can type a number followed by the letter S to set the exact number of segments of the curve. Okay, before we move on to the next curve type, let's just go over these tools on the right because they apply the same principles regardless of the curve type you use. So this one closes the loop nicely. This next one closes it with a simple straight line. This one here shows the position of the vertices and this one enters the edit mode if you accidentally get out of it by clicking away. And this little wrench icon allows you to set additional parameters that are available only for some curve types but not this classic Bezier we've got here. We'll use it later. And remember, all five tools will work the same way for every curve type. Now let's move on. Second curve type, simple polyline. This curve is just a polyline made out of segments that simply connect all the control points with a simple straight line. But it still acts like a single curve object and it can be edited the same way all others can. Third type, polyline divider for animation. This one is just like the simple polyline, but you get the options to set the distance between vertices. And be careful, I'm talking about vertices of the curve, not control points. These are control points, and these little white dots are vertices. You can set a constant value as the distance between them, or you can choose from these four presets to maybe vertices closer on one end and further apart on the other, or closer near the ends and further apart in the middle, like in this case. This is also the first curve type that lets you use the wrench icon tool to edit the parameter values when in edit mode. Fourth type polyline arc corners. First you need to set the offset value. Let's just type 50 and press OK. I'll talk about that value in a second. Now let's draw our polyline. Double click to confirm and see that we've created a polyline with rounded corners. And that value of 50 we've set is the distance between the intersection of the two directions and the start of the arc. You can improve the smoothness of the arc by typing a higher number of segments here as usual. Fifth type, uniform B-spline. Again, first thing we need to set is the order value. Let's type five this time. So uniform B-spline curve gives a nice smoothing in general. And the order value we've set allows tuning the smoothing. The higher the number, the smoother the curve will be. Even though it says you have 100 levels of smoothness, I actually noticed that every value equal or greater than 6 gives out the same result. And values 1 and 2 result both in a simple polyline. 
so we seem to get a total of only 4 smooth levels, 3, 4, 5 and 6. The next curve type is Catmull Spline. This one is particular spline that actually passes through the control points and still keeps a smooth feel of the curve. Next one, Polyline Chamfer. This one works just like the polyline arc corners. Remember, first you set the offset, but when drawing the curve, instead of round corners, you get a chamfered corner with the offset value being the distance between the intersection of two directions and the start of the chamfer. Let's move on. The Corbett curve is based on arcs of a circle. The first three control points define the first arc, and all other arcs are defined by the next control point in the tangent on the previous arc, which is just a fancy way to say that the transition between one arc and the other is a smooth one. Next curve type, Cubic Bezier. This Bezier is very similar to the Catmull Rom spline, though based on a very different algorithm, but a little bit further away from the polygon of control points. So it is to be used for smoothing a complete polyline rather than just rounding edges. Next one, Polyline Divider. First you set the interval, let's try 30, and this tool makes a simple straight edge polyline but made entirely out of segments of identical lengths. And you've guessed it, the length of each segment is the interval value we've just set. Next we got the dog bone corner. You set the radius, let's try 30 again, and every corner of the polyline will have a 30 cm radius arc passing right through the control points. Can say I see a practical use of this tool, but it's fun I guess. But not as fun as the next one, the T-bone corner polyline. Let's keep the radius at 30 and draw our polyline with half circles at each corner. Last but not least, the F-spline. This curve is actually a uniform B-spline curve of order 3 that is adjusted to pass through the control points. The shape of the generated curve is much smoother than the cubic Bezier and Catmull ROM. So these are all tools from the toolbar, but I still have to tell you about the context menu, which is the coolest thing about this plugin. By right-clicking on each curve, you get the option to convert every curve type to a different one. And it also allows you to convert any number of connected simple SketchUp lines to a simple polyline and then to any other curve type we've talked about in this video. And that is nice, right? Well, okay, that is it for this video. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to follow my Twitch channel if you want to participate now and then in a SketchUp modeling stream with Q&A. You'll find the link in the description. I'll start to stream once a week as soon as we reach enough followers. This is all free, so don't worry about that. Anyway, I want to thank you again all for watching and thank you for supporting this channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.